Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you some settings you can change to help configure DaVinci Resolve so that when you're working on every new project, things will be a little bit easier for you and a little bit more customized to your needs. So the first thing I want to show you, if you happen to have multiple speakers, headphones, whatever you have in your environment, we can actually select the output device in the DaVinci Resolve menu, which will give us preferences down here. You can also access it by hitting Control plus uh, Comma. And we want to go over to the system tab in the middle here. So audio, video and audio in out here. That's going to allow us to set which device we're using for our audio output. So you can see here, I have a few different audio devices available and I can choose my headset by going to speakers to USB audio device. Obviously on your computer, what your headphones or your speakers are actually called is going to vary a bit. But you can set that and save it there so that whenever you're working in DaVinci Resolve, it's going to be outputting to the proper audio device. Next up, you're going to want to add in your different storage locations on your computer. So this is going to be for anything media based that you might use inside DaVinci Resolve, including videos. So you can see I have the C Drive users Chris videos folder, which is username videos. Um, but you might also add in some extra ones like a folder with all your sound effects. Uh, a folder for music and if you want to add any of those in you simply right click here and hit add new location so from there you just navigate through your computer or any connected network location you simply enter the folder you want to appear here in the future and you hit select folder so by doing that i've added in my music folder so any music i might have on my computer so like some of this uh, creative common stuff by kevin mcleod I can bring that into my project very easily by dropping it into the media pool. Also note, if you do have a lot of different storage locations here, you can drag your favorites down here into favorites so that you have kind of a hot list there. Okay, so let's go back in the DaVinci Resolve Preferences menu here really quick. And this time on the User tab, there's a section called Project Save and Load. I think it's a pretty good idea to, in saved settings, check Live Save and Project Backup. So Live Save will mean that whenever you make changes, it's automatically going to go ahead and save the project for you so that if your system crashes at any time or for any reason, uh, those saves should be made uh, basically instantly. And Project Backups over here, it will try to back up the project to a different file once every 10 minutes. And the advantage here is if you catastrophically mess up your DaVinci Resolve project file, or you delete it or something like that, uh, you will have these backups where you can lose just a little bit of your work and be able to continue working from that last backup point. So I think that having both of these is a really good idea. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And now we can go to a different section for settings, which is file and then project settings or shift F9 on your keyboard. Uh, you can see here on the first section that uh, we are able to set different presets for all of these following settings, which is a good idea. So if we, um, let's say, load a profile here and I go over to master settings and let's say I changed the timeline resolution down for whatever reason, I can actually click on system config and then overwrite those settings. So if you want to have uh, specific project settings that will load on every new project you create. Um, that would be how you do it. Just make your changes, then go in here to system config and apply it to the system. However, if you want it to be a profile you have to load manually, you can save as a new profile down here, um, such as going to Chris's default, hit save or save as to make a new one. And then on different projects, you just come in here, load it once and all of the settings are loaded for your project. Now, a few good settings I would recommend changing. First off, timeline resolution. So for timeline resolution, this should probably be whatever file resolution you want to export your videos in. So the idea here is if you're going to be trying to build videos that something like 720p, uh, maybe for file size reasons or upload bandwidth reasons, uh, then you can come in here and make that setting so that as you're working in your files and when you go to export, it should kind of default to that 720p resolution. But also if you're recording in high resolution, like 4K, you can come in here and set that as your default because you intend to work on 4K resolution videos and for that to be your final export resolution. Uh, here I'm just leaving that set to 180p or 1920 by 1080 pixels. Um, you'll also notice down here timeline frame rate. 
This is going to be how many frames of video happen in every second of video. So generally this doesn't make sense to go any higher than what you recorded it at. So you can increase the timeline frame rate up to 60 frames per second, uh, but if you didn't record in 60 frames per second, it probably makes more sense to have it at 30 or 24. Now, if you've ever brought video clips into DaVinci Resolve, which had different settings than what's here in the master settings, then you might have noticed uh, whenever you bring in your first clip, it allows you to actually apply the settings from your clip rather than the settings in your master settings. So that whatever resolution and frame rate your video clip that you're pulling in has, it'll automatically set that for your individual projects. But if you want to have some consistent settings here, or you intend to export your video at a different frame rate and resolution than the clips you're bringing in, then this is a good place to start setting it. Other settings you may want to play around with might be in the image scaling. You can come down here to mismatched resolution files and possibly change it from scale entire image to fit to center crop with no resizing if you prefer the images to have the exact size that they actually exist as a file on your computer. Also subtitles if you want captions that are longer than three seconds and you intend to actually write captions inside of DaVinci Resolve 15, one of the new features they added, uh, you can go ahead and do that as well as increasing the characters per line. Obviously there's a lot more to play around with here. But whenever you are done, just come back in here. You can overwrite the system config if you want, or you can just save new profiles. So to do your profile, why not? And one more thing, uh, back in DaVinci Resolve preferences, if changing your key bindings is something that appeals to you, you can come down here to keyboard mapping. Uh, one thing to note is that it actually has default settings for other programs. So if you're more used to something like Adobe Premiere, or Apple Final Cut Pro, you can switch to those key binding sets, or you can customize everything individually as you see fit. Uh, I'm just going to leave it as the defaults because I think those work pretty well. So obviously there's more settings you can dig into if you really have the time, but that should be a quick overview of how to configure DaVinci Resolve so that you can get going in some of your first projects. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future video content.